Welcome to CodeZing.org. We're going to do another project today, a level 2 project called Age in Seconds. So it's going to calculate how old you are in seconds. What kind of cool. Um, website, CodeZing.org backslash, backslash age to get the, the example code and a working, um, a working product there. You make your way to CodeZing.org in your web browser and click on Level 2 Code. Go down to How Old Are You in Seconds. And you're going to input your month, day, and year of birth. And submit that and it will tell you you are 593 million seconds old. And I would have 6 million seconds until my next birthday. So kind of neat. Um, Scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can get the Python code. Go ahead and copy. And then open the spider IDE, and we'll paste that in. So if you don't have spider or Python, head back to the website and follow the links to get Python. Um, so let's, let's take a look here and see what's going on with this code. So we've got a few new things in this one that we haven't seen before, but let's start clicking through. So the first one is import uh, date time. So we've imported random before on several projects, but this is a different library called date time because we're going to be working with dates. So Python's really good at, at, at using dates and working with dates and being able to calculate differences and stuff between dates, which is great on bigger projects. Um, but it's a little it's a little tricky, not quite as straightforward, um, and that's because of all the time zone issues. They make it a little more complex, so it's more robust. It can handle a lot more stuff, but it makes it a little complicated to do really basic things. But but let's dive in and, and give it a shot. So the first ones are all <coughs> excuse me, all inputs like we've seen in the past. So we're asking the user for the year, month, and day they were born, and we're converting that to an int, uh, as we've discussed several times already. Now here's something new that we haven't seen. So this is a try and accept block. And so what it's going to do is it's going to try to do this top function. So it's try colon and then these are indented because they're under there are what what the code is going to try to do. And it's going to try to calculate the date of birth. And this is datetime dot datetime is the function in the datetime library we need. So we're calling the datetime library and the date time method within the date time library. And we're just setting the year equal to the birth year, the month equal to birth month, the day equal to birth day, and birth year, birth month, and birthday are the variables that we set uh, from the user input. And then it's going to print your birthday is and the date of birth. If for some reason it can't run that code, like let's say somebody put in a number that it can't understand, like you put in the month equals 13, or somebody switched the month and the day, or the year wasn't in the four-year format, then, then this function is going to fail. It's going to produce an error, but it'll just produce a very general error. So what we've done down here is do it if Python tries to run this and runs into an error, it will then do this accept piece. So we do accept and then a colon and then the code indented. And it'll print, that didn't work. Your input day, month, and year. And as we've seen before, the dot format in the print function will put birthday in between these brackets, birth month in between these brackets, and birth year in between these brackets. So let's, let's give it a try and see what that part of the code is doing. So let's do it correctly first. So the year 2000, month, day, and you can see it finishes the code. It says your birthday is, you can see it's doing January 1st, 2000, and then it finishes the calculation down here, but this is the part of the code that we've looked at so far, the inputs and then the calculation of the birthday. So let's see what happens if I, if, if I mess that up. So let's say I put 0, 0, 1, and 1, and I don't put it in the four year the, the four-digit format for the year. You can see it says that didn't work correctly. Your input day, month, and year. So it gives you feedback to what you put in. Um, you could obviously add more stuff. You could add more code that actually checks whether the, 
the four year the year is put in as four digits uh, and print a more detailed explanation of what went wrong uh, but we're keeping it keeping it simple for now but feel free to add that in or try to add that in and see if you can use maybe if statements say if the year the length of the year is less than four then print out um, print out that the year is incorrect or uh, you know, think it through. Think of a way that if if somebody messed it up, what would you have it print out to help them fix it and run it correctly? So it did end up calculating age, but I think it probably calculates it based off of. Um, I'm not I'm not sure what it was able to figure out there, but it did calculate something. Six thousand days. Um, oh, maybe it um, it probably it saved that from the last run and did the calculation correctly. I think if we, if we went up to the console and restarted restarted Python, meaning it's starting it from scratch, it didn't save any of the previous variables from the time when we ran it correctly. Um, let's try it. And zero, one. Yeah, and you can see it didn't, it didn't finish the code. It wasn't able to do the calculation. The reason it did it the last time is because it had remembered from the one time I did it correctly, it had saved those variables. Um, so let's see, what's the next block? So now we have another try and another accept. So it's going to try to do the calculation. Right? So this is all the calculation of the code and the printouts. If it fails to do the calculation, then it'll print this accept code. So we want it to try this block. If for any reason that fails, we want it to print unable to finish code just like it did last time. It wasn't able to figure out what date of birth was because that part failed and so it failed this part as well. Let's look at the calculation in a little detail. So first we want today's date. and We want that to be flexible. We don't want people to have to enter today's date. So we can we can call from Python datetime.datetime.now with the brackets. So that will bring the current date and time based off of the date and time that your computer is set to. Um, the next is the date next, which would be trying to figure out the next birthday. So in the code we print out not only how old you are in seconds, but how long until your next birthday. So we need to figure out what your next birth date will be. And so it's going to calculate it as uh, the date today year, and then your birth month and your birth day. So it's going to assume that your next birthday is your the the birth month birthday, but today's year. And here it's calling date dot date underscore today, which is the the variable we set here, and then dot year brings just the year from today's date. So year equals the current year, month equals your birth month, and day equals your birthday, and it'll try to set that to your birthday. The one tricky part is if your birthday has already occurred in the year, like January 1st, it's past January 1st, and so if it if it does this, this will actually be not your next birthday, but the most recent one of this year. So this is going to say if date today is greater than date next, and if we set this date next into a date that's less than date today, then what I want to do is set the set the year to date next plus one year. So I want to up the year one more year so that it's getting the next birthday. So if date next occurred in the past, um, before date today, then we need to up the year one. So now that we've set the current date and the date of your next birthday, it's going to do the calculation. So your age in seconds is going to be date time dot time delta, which delta in mathematics just means the difference or the change in. So time delta dot total underscore seconds, total underscore seconds, date today minus date of birth. So the difference between your date today, the current date, and the date of birth. So that's your age in seconds, and then your 
age is going to equal the date today minus the date of birth. So that's going to be in just regular days um, and not in seconds. And then age next is going to be the same time delta, but it's going to calculate from your next birthday from today. And then we have three print statements. It's going to print out the results. It's going to print out our age in seconds. Uh, just the general age that we calculated in days, and then the the age next. If any of that fails for any reason, it's going to print the accept statement. So let's give it a run and make sure it's all working again. So what year was I born? Month and day. And let's see how it works. So your birthday is, that's from up here, that's our turning our date of birth into date time so the Python can understand it. Your age in seconds, 593 million seconds. And that is going to be from your age in seconds is, and we're printing age seconds. So that's this calculation. And then your age is 669 days. So that's this piece. Right, we can see it's printing your age is and the variable age. And that's coming from here, which is today's date minus, minus your date of birth. Seconds until your next birthday is 6 million. We can see that that's printing from age next. And age next is here. The calculation is the your next birthday minus the date today. So just a brief look, kind of an introduction into date time and, and messing around with, with dates. And so uh, hopefully... You can play around with it. If you want to learn more about the DateTime library, you can go to Google and search Python DateTime, and there's a bunch of documentation on um, python.org that will um, that will help you understand more about DateTime. There's certainly more things you can do with DateTime if you think of different calculations that you can do, um, or you can think up a new game with a different a different calculation. So hopefully that's interesting and gets you introduced to try and accept and date time as well. So have fun exploring and feel free to uh, send me an email with any questions or add comments below the video um, and I'll try to try to answer all those. So all right, have fun.